Before we get started, we just want to thank the sponsors that you see here on the screen for, for helping put this event together. And I'm going to get started in just a second, but uh, you're actually muted right now as you join, but please feel free to use the chat function. Feel free to drop in any questions. Feel free to let us know what you think as we go through. We're going to get to questions at the end. Um, so feel free to, again, drop those in the chat. I am, I'm really excited to be here on behalf of um, InfoSec. We are actually a, a cybersecurity education company located here in Madison, actually we're on West Wash, just a few blocks off the square. Um, and we have the privilege of helping individuals and helping organizations uh, of all sizes around the world stay cyber secure. And, and I'm especially excited to have, you know, kind of a home game today and, and share a lot of our expertise with you. Um, and today I'm heading up the Breach Patrol and we are sharing our top 10 tips for staying cyber safe. So there are a lot of there are a lot of elements that contribute to staying cyber safe, right? You've got government agencies, you've got threat intelligence groups, you've got, you know, they're, they're going out of their way to keep tabs on all the newest attack vectors and attacks that are around the world. You've got all kinds of, you know, world-class cybersecurity technologies built into your phone, built into whatever device you've joined on today. Um, those are obviously designed to keep us cyber secure, but really it's, it's people like you, it's people like me that will, always be an access point for cyber criminals trying to steal money, trying to you know, steal data, credentials, intellectual property, and a lot more. So really that's why at InfoSec, we, we focus on this human side of cybersecurity. So we focus on providing that right level of education for, for everyone, right? Whether you're an IT or a security expert, or if you have you know, virtually no background in technology, um, we provide education. And I, I really, I, I cannot stress this enough. This, this doesn't just mean staying secure at work, right? This means staying secure every time you or your friends or anyone in your family interface with technology. So in today's presentation, I'm gonna be focusing on this, this more broad audience, right? People who don't work in IT and security who aren't necessarily experts in outsmarting cyber criminals, but who still actually play a, an, an extremely large role in not only keeping themselves secure, but actually keeping you know, any organizations they work, they work at it secure as well. So with all that being said, my name is Tyler Schultz. I'm a product marketing manager here at InfoSec. I'm also a certified security awareness practitioner, so trained in helping individuals identify and avoid cyber threats that they face both at work and at home, right, in your day-to-day -day lives. But perhaps my most important title or accomplishment, I'm also a former lifeguard. Shout out to Watertown Aquatic Center. Um, so I feel especially qualified to be leading today's breach patrol. It's kind of where I wanted to start. Uh, speaking of lifeguarding, that's clearly what you guys came to, to hear about today. Um, the job is equal parts, you know, excruciatingly boring and actually very terrifying. So, right, you spend a lot of time watching the water, you spend a lot of time yelling at kids for running and yelling at kids for throwing sand and yelling at kids who pretend like they're drowning, which they, of course, love to do. Uh, yelling at kids because you're just starting to get bored and you're really starting to enjoy it, right? This is a big part of the job. You can get caught up in, you know, that pure joy or, or boredom and forget like the real point you're actually out there, right? There are, there are real dangers every time someone steps into the water. So today, obviously, we're, we're talking about cybersecurity. The danger isn't the water. The danger is it's the technology that we are immersed in every single day, right? At home, at work, virtually everywhere we go. And you don't have a lifeguard standing over your shoulder yelling at you every single time that you do something unsafe when you're online. Um, I'm sure you're very thankful for that. Uh, but you have to rely on yourself, right? All the actions that you take, your own cyber hygiene to avoid this potential disaster. So that's what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to explore this human cyber risk that all of us face every single day. Um, then we're going to jump into those 10 tips for staying cyber safe. Um, and then finally, I'm going to leave you with some free cybersecurity resources that you can take with you, share with your friends, share with your family, or of course, an option to, to, to use this at your workplace, right? Whether or not this is something that you do with uh, as part of your role, which is you know, sharing some cyber tips or something you just like to you know, 
obviously introduce it at your organization. So let's talk about human cyber risk. So human is, is the key term here. This is the risk you know, us or, or others around us assume based on the actions that we take. So how likely are we to click a phishing link? How strong are our passwords? You know, even if when you walk into the office in the morning, do you hold the door for, for the stranger coming in to be friendly or do you, you know, kindly ask them, hey, it's actually our policy, you actually need to key yourself in. Um, human cyber risk, it, it stems from our behaviors, right? It's, it's, these are the things that we have control of. So you might be thinking, all right, so, you know, I'm, I'm hearing on the news, we've got these state-sponsored hacker teams, we've got ransomware attacks that are, you know, shutting down oil pipelines. I'm sure there'll be a new cybersecurity breach within the next couple of weeks on the news that you'll see. So how much of a factor, you know, am I or are you personally or, or my family or my coworkers in the grand scheme of cybersecurity? So I'm here to tell you, you, you play a, a massive role um, and a role only you can play. And I just want to start even from a business perspective for, you know, all the entrepreneurs out there. A um, couple of interesting stats, 22% of data breaches involve phishing. So by design, right, these phishing emails are built to target individuals like you and me. And you've probably seen, again, a lot of news coverage about breaches and ransomware attacks targeting some of the largest organizations in the world. But actually pretty interesting, small organizations, those between one and 250 employees, they actually have the highest targeted malicious email rate. So one in 323 emails essentially is malicious. It could be the cause of uh, a security breach or, or the loss of credentials, the loss of um, something important to you or your organization, right? Small organizations are just as much, if not, if, if not more vulnerable to these gigantic corporations that we hear about so often. Um, the average cost of a data breach is $4.24 million. That number actually jumps for U.S. companies to, to over $9 million. And here's the kicker. Here's the big reason we're talking about all this today. 85% of security incidents involve human error. So, right, it's easy to think about those, you know, covert hacking units, breaching our technology, right, using all this um, incredible knowledge and, and brute force attacks that cause these major security breaches. But most of the time it's not, right? The vast majority of security incidents come from very simple human errors that could have been avoided. So I think this is uh, an explanation for this, maybe best said by the Center for Internet Security. It's easier for an attacker to entice a user to click a link or open an email attachment to install malware than it is to find a network and exploit and do it directly. So they come after us because it's easier. It's also very profitable, right? The cybercrime, cybercrime really is, a, it's, it's an industry and it's a thriving industry, right? There's sophisticated organizations run efficiently, run as effectively as what you would consider a, a legitimate business. Um, so these, these groups, they go after businesses, but they also go after individuals, right? They're, they're looking to steal bank account information, social security numbers, um, and really deploy any scam that they can think of to, to get our money and put it in their pockets. To make matters even worse, it isn't just the top hacking organizations that we have to worry about. Really, it, it's, it's never been easier to be a cyber criminal. That's not to encourage you to be a cyber criminal, but just, just to give you an example, phishing kits. So, Phishing Kit is a collection of, of software tools that make it very, very simple for people with little to no technical skills whatsoever to launch very sophisticated phishing exploits against essentially anyone they have the email address for. So our team at InfoSec, we actually recently got onto, onto the dark web. We took a look at some of these, these marketplaces where a lot of these transactions and, and even phishing kits are sold. And we dissected some of the, the most popular phishing kits we could find. So this is actually a screenshot we took while browsing, right? You can see a nice list of all the categories of all the um, illegal things that you might wanna purchase. Uh, and this might not look quite like you'd expect. This isn't you know, some black screen, green text. You have to have some secret password or invite to get there. It, it kind of looks like you're just shopping on Amazon. Um, these kits, they include the phishing emails themselves, right? What would actually arrive in your inbox, but they also can include fake login pages. 
which are used to capture you know, your login credentials. They can come with email lists. Um, they can also come with tutorials to make setup extremely easy. Some of them even come with support services, right? Call them up, hey, I'm having some trouble scamming a bunch of senior citizens out of their retirement savings. Can you, you know, point me in the right direction? All of this can be included. There, you've got ratings for sellers and you can see some of these kits can go for as cheap as 99 cents. So when you think about things like this, it, it makes sense why we're seeing this, this rise in cyber attacks. And it's, it's, it's become extremely profitable. Cyber criminals, cyber crime in total, the total amount of revenue generated is approximated at one and a half trillion dollars each year, right? So again, like I said, making more than some of the, the largest, largest organizations in the world, legitimate businesses in the world. And life is getting a little harder for us too, right? We're holding this event virtually, right? COVID-19 has pushed many workforces into remote or hybrid work environments. Um, it's also influenced the types of attacks that are used, the attack vectors, um, and we've got a lot more connected devices, right? The, the surface of potential attack is a lot larger than it used to be. So I just went on for a long time about a lot of bad news. Uh, a little bit, sorry to do that, but I, I think it's a, a good way to kind of set the stage and right, face what we're up against, but also there's actually, there's actually very good news here. Um, avoiding all of this, all of this scary stuff I just went through and staying cyber safe, it, you don't have to become a cybersecurity expert or buy hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of new technology or you know, take down these mar marketplaces that are selling all these uh, phishing kits and other, other sources of scams and hacks. Go for it. If you, if you want to do that, that would be great. But what it really takes is, is a few simple precautions that you, your family, your coworkers can take to really, really dramatically reduce your risk. So I picked out um, 10 of you know, some of our most important tips and many of these you can actually implement today. You can implement some of them as we're going through this. Um, these are things that can be small, but they are gonna make a, a gigantic difference and all, all pieced together are gonna have a huge impact on how you live your life, but also from a business perspective, um, you know, how your organization operates as well. So we're going to um, we're going to hit the ground running with what I think might be the most important tip when it comes to avoiding phishing attacks, which is, again, one of the most common attacks that you will face, and that is to check the URL. So these days, phishing emails are are really good, and by that I mean they're they're convincing, right? They're not littered with misspellings and and a bunch of obvious red flags that look very strange. They look real and it's more important than ever to check, check what you're clicking on, right? And you can do this by hovering over the link or the button, whatever you're, you're being asked to do, just to confirm exactly where this is going. Um, in this case, make sure you're being taken to netflix.com. And it's just as important to check the URL when you land on a page as well. So this is so, so, so important before entering credentials. Um, as I mentioned before, cyber criminals, they can easily spoof these login pages, make them look like they're the real page you're trying to get to. The second you type in your, your username and password, they've got you. Um, so again, the only way, the only obvious way to really see that this is not the right site is by checking that URL. So always just a good practice, always one to, to, to think about essentially every time you're, you're in your inbox, right? Next tip, verify. So this tip applies to phishing emails, to text messages, phone calls, voicemails. If you get a strange request, right, like a request to send money, to share credentials, to share some other sensitive information, even if it looks like it's coming from a friend or your boss or the CEO at your company, always verify. So there is a little caveat here. Always verify using actually a different communication method. You know, if, you're, if your boss sends an email asking you to buy 50 gift cards because we want to say thanks to all our, you know, our, our, our top clients, send them an in instant message rather than replying to the email. Give them a call, stop by their desk just to confirm. Don't reply using the same communication method that that suspicious activity came from because you can imagine what will happen if you do. Not only will they know your inbox is active and you're, you're uh, you know, willing to help, um, but they're also just say, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we'll, we'll confirm with the same email that we sent you. Tip number three, your information is valuable, protect it. 
So there's an obvious element to this, right? You already know this. I'm, I'm not gonna give away my bank account numbers or login credentials, or social, social security numbers. Really what I'm getting at here is this, this goes a little bit deeper. Even personal information that to you on first glance, it, it might seem fairly harmless. Say like your, your pet's name, that's actually very valuable, right? That can be used to guess your passwords or to win your trust in a social engineering attack. Um, a big place where this comes up, a lot, a lot of people don't really think about it, is social media, right? That's, that's, that's where people harvest personal information that, that can then be used to attack you, right? And this is exactly what attackers do, right? They learn something about you. So when they send you a message, they can earn your trust or they convince you that they actually know you or they can strike up a conversation you're probably going to be interested in. All that information, even stuff that seems kind of small, it's, it's valuable. So if it's valuable, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's smart for you to protect it. Right? Tip number four, use a different password for everything. You've, I, kn I know you've heard this one before and you've probably thought, yeah, right, buddy, there's no way I'm going to do that. There's no way I'm going to remember all those unique passwords. And that's, that's fair enough. Um, I've, you know, had the same thought myself and you're probably right, right? Nobody's going to remember all these unique passwords. There's a hint password managers. You can download them for free. You can download them on your phone or your web browser. You can generate these strong random passwords for your accounts, which you can then auto-populate into your web browser. You can look them up from your phone and, and, uh, and enter them when you're, when you're logging in. This is, this, is, this is the way to do it. And in reality, if we're thinking of practical tips we can actually apply, that's definitely the best way to do it. So an alternative to that, or you know, also a, a good way to approach your passwords is, um, is passphrases. Using passphrases as opposed to trying to you know, come up with some random string of letters, it's always gonna be more effective. Um, so you don't need to be, these don't need to be extremely complicated. Um, these don't have to be um, impossible for anyone to ever guess or remember the, the, the point is, Passphrases are, you know, essentially these simple sentences or phrases that are typically longer than what a traditional password is, but they're easy for you to remember. And, and in that case, it's usable for you, but it's hard for a, a hacker to crack. So this is just one example. Let's take the word surfing. Next, let's turn this into a phrase, go surfing with me. And then we just, all we need to do finally is just to add one layer of complexity, right? So adding capital letters, swapping the, the O with a zero, um, abbreviating, uh, in this case, abbreviating with, and then adding a symbol at the end. And there you have, you still have a pass a phrase you can remember, go surfing with me, but it's, it's added with a layer of complexity that'll help keep you secure. All right, moving on to tip six, uh, change your default credentials. So this is especially important. Probably the most important example is when you're setting up your wireless network or what you've got, what you've got set up at home, um, your internet set up at home, which, Oftentimes when you, when you get this set up, it comes with some out of the box default credentials that are set up and you're off and running and you're ready to go. Cyber criminals hope that you don't ever change these default credentials, right? So they can gain access to your network with little or no effort at all, essentially. So this same pr principle, you know, changing your default credentials, this applies to any new account that assigns you a, a password when you get started. So it's always easy, first step, change those default credentials. Tip number seven, enable multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication, it's when you need to provide more than one form of, essentially form of proof that you are the legitimate owner of the account. So you've, I'm sure done this before, this typically comes in the form of starting with entering your username and password, and then receiving a verification code via text message or via email, and then entering that into essentially say, hey, this, this is actually me. This is, it sounds simple, but it's it's an incredibly powerful level of security that can save you or your accounts, even if someone else gets a hold of your password. Right, that's kind of your last your last line of defense in keeping your information, your account secure. So this is another security best practice that I'm sure you've heard. And I'm sure you've also thought, man, that is a real hassle. Um, not just the verification step, but actually just going through all my accounts and finding this and enabling this and getting all this set up. So one just bonus tip to get you started on this, more and more apps and accounts than ever are actively pushing you to enable multi-factor authentication. 
So whether you open the app or you just get started, it's, I would say probably the easiest way to get started with, for this is to simply stop ignoring those prompts, right? You get the prompt, um, actually just moving through and enabling it when you're asked to, you're gonna start chipping away at a lot of your accounts and this is gonna become second nature in no time to have, especially your most important accounts backed up by multi-factor authentication. Tip number eight, enable automatic updates. So this may be the simplest step that, that you can take that goes such a, such a long way. Um, a few minutes ago, our, our discussion about human cybersecurity risk, we talked about the things you uh, personally, those things that you can do to protect yourself. So you personally, you're not going to go out and patch security vulnerabilities in your software and devices. That's what, you know, the security teams at these gigantic tech companies, they're, that's what they're paid the big bucks to do. But it is your responsibility to install those updates and make sure those updates are actually pushed to your, to your um, accounts and your devices. Um, the, uh, the, the reality of this one too is you would love to be able to just update these you know, frequently and remember to do it. I know even personally, I would, I would never even remember to do this, right? I work at a cybersecurity company and I would never remember to do this. So that's what automatic updates come for. Enable this. So these security patches, they're installed for you. You get them as soon as they're released and you can keep, keep everything secure. Number nine on the home stretch, we're talking suspicious emails um, or be suspicious of attachments specifically. So as long as you know, email remains this very, you know, probably one of the primary forms of communication, including in business, including in your personal lives, attachments are they're, they're here to stay. But kind of an inside secret, cyber criminals absolutely love attachments. Um, same reason that security people kind of hate attachments. They're very good at delivering malicious payloads and they're very, very good at hiding them. So again, attachments aren't really going anywhere. It wouldn't be responsible to say, hey, just stop using attachments and you'll be secure. The best you can do is be suspicious of every single one. Um, and here are just a couple of my you know, favorite tips around attachments to help you avoid malware and other threats that are associated with them. Um, just ask yourself, did this email come from a legitimate source? Are there antivirus warnings? Are there other types of warnings within my inbox related to that attachment? Does the email itself look normal? And did I expect to get this email, right? If my coworker said, hey, I'm sending this over to you in a second, you get the email and it has an attachment. It's, it's most likely, okay, you're, you, you, know, you can feel safe moving forward in that case. Um, if, but if any of these questions ride, you know, raise any red flags about the email, don't open the attachment. And remember, Tip number two, I believe, was verify. You can always just verify using a separate communication method that this attachment is legitimate and then you can move forward and, and not be worried about uh, malware, ransomware that, that we talked about earlier. All right, so up to now, we've talked about avoiding attacks and suspicious activity, and that's certainly you know, priority number one. But I wanted to leave you with one uh, very important tip number 10. If it looks suspicious, report it. So fighting cybercrime, it really takes every single one of us, right? Um, we're all a potential um, access point for attack, so it takes all of us. And the best way to help others outside of just yourself is to report anything that looks suspicious. So at work, you may have you know, special reporting policies laid out by your IT or your security team. Follow those reporting procedures. You know, and if you're a business leader and you, you, you don't have a reporting procedure in place for your employees, now is definitely the time to, to put that in place. Um, reporting suspicious activity, you're not just protecting yourself, you really are protecting others as well. Okay, so to wrap things up, I just wanted to share a few final thoughts and, and, and some resources um, and just in general, kind of where do we go next? So an obvious first step is implement all these amazing tips that I just, I just shared with you, keep yourself secure. To be honest, the more of these you can do, certainly the better. If you do them all, that's great. But it's certainly each, each of these steps will add a layer of security to everything that you do and everything that you that is uh, you know, valuable to you. So it's, it's just in your best interest to take as many as you can and just work them into the way that you, you interact with technology. Um, but so step number one, obviously kind of uh, keeping yourself secure, but it's you know, similar to like an oxygen mask on an airplane, help yourself, then focus on helping others. Um, speaking of others, 
share what you've learned and what you know about cybersecurity, even before this presentation. Share this with your, with your family and friends. A lot of this stuff that seems so obvious to you, even some of the things I said, you might have been saying, yeah, I knew that. That's not all obvious to a lot of the people around you, right? Cybersecurity is absolutely a life skill. It's, it's skills that are necessary for living in today's world. And it's definitely worth it to have those conversations with, with friends and family and, and share what you know and, um, and pass that security along. Finally, uh, spreading security awareness at your organization. So at InfoSec, this is, this is essentially what we help organizations do. This is our jam. Um, if you're a, you know, a business leader, if you work in IT or security, this may be very top of mind for you. Um, but helping employees stay secure at work and at home, it's, it's a vital component to operating any business. And it's also very good timing to be talking about cybersecurity and, and sharing resources at your organization because October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So this is, this is a worldwide event. It encourages everyone to stay safe online, to do your part, to be cyber smart is their slogan. Um, you may have even participated in some Cybersecurity Awareness Month initiatives in the past. Um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it's, it's one of our favorite times of the year at InfoSec and, and we go out of our way to help individuals and to help organizations bring cybersecurity to the front and center and have conversations like, like, like we just did today. So this year we built a cybersecurity awareness month toolkit to help organizations run their own security awareness campaign this October. So this is completely free. This is available to you today. Um, the toolkit is titled the road to cybersecurity and, and it contains theme training resources, including a training module and posters and infographics, uh, a presentation, newsletters, it's got a communication plan to kind of help you roll out the entire campaign. Um, again, all these are themed, as you can kind of see the, the road to cybersecurity theme displayed here. And it includes a lot of the, the, the tips that I shared in today's presentation. Um, again, this is completely free, something any organization can roll out. I strongly encourage you, you can actually download this right now if you want to um, actually, we, we might have actually already shared this in the chat, but um, we can send this link over to you as well, just to download this kit for completely for free and just share that at your organization as well. Okay, I'm coming in just ahead of time. Let me <laughs> see a, a comment from Kermit about John Oliver's coverage. Uh, it's actually really good. Um, yeah, ransomware is, it's probably the one that you'll hear in the news most often, right? Ransomware, it's, it, it's very public because it, it essentially will lock down entire organizations and lock down their data unless they pay, you know, dollar amounts, right? Pay Bitcoin to, to get things unlocked. So that type of thing gets public so quickly and you're going to get coverage from John Oliver. And it is something that's absolutely on the rise. When I was talking about attachments, attachments are a huge entry point for a lot of ransomware attacks. So that's something you'll continue to hear. And again, all these tips that I shared are definitely um, apply to avoiding ransomware personally and, and professionally as well. But we are coming up on time. So I'm going to wrap things up. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative. Um, I hope you all have a great day.